Riley, uh, he mentioned being nervous earlier. So uh, if he looks out there and sees you, you better be smiling back. Okay, you good now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Riley, take, take, a, take a second and just uh, tell everybody who you are, where you go to school, how old you are. My name's Riley Ferguson, and I go to Hanover, and I'm 15 in the ninth grade. Um, t- would you take a second and just tell everybody about maybe a little bit of your, your spiritual past, like growing up and, and uh, all the way up to um, how you came to impact? Um, I originally grew up in Memphis, and we attended a church there, and we were Presbyterian, and we attended on a regular basis, and then in my fifth grade year, at towards the end, my dad said that we were here going to move to Wilmington for his work and moved here. And I started sixth grade here in Wilmington, didn't know anybody. And we didn't really have a church. We tried a bunch, but we didn't really find one. And we kind of just kept out for a couple of years until in this year, around February, uh, Miss Mary invited me to come to church with her to impact. And we went in the first time, and I think my entire family really liked it the first time. And we kept coming back. Awesome. That's Mary McCoy. That's who you're talking about, Mary mm-hmm. and Tim. And you know Rachel too, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he, don't blush. It's okay. <laughs> Um, so how did, obviously you, you knew about Christ, uh, you, you sort of knew what God had done for you, but tell us about your journey of faith and, and how you came to know the Lord in, in the last, uh, few weeks. We were sitting in Oasis and we were discussing the Lord's Supper and we were also talking about Adam and Eve in Genesis and great in great detail and I had never heard it in such it, it made sense it no one had ever explained it that way and Daniel said raise your hand if you've never if you had heard this or not and I raised my hand because I didn't hear it and I had never heard it like that and so we went to his office the next Sunday and he talked to me how sin comes with death and how you how it's a gap between you and God and you have to make that gap and walk of God and stop centering your life around yourself and be one of God yeah 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 we talked about it that night at Oasis you know we we as a church we we do the Lord's Supper uh, a lot and and I thought it would be a a great opportunity for us to talk uh, about what the Lord's Supper really meant uh, and and what the elements are about and, and why we do it the way we do it and and before we actually took the Lord's Supper, I said, look, if you have not made that decision um, and given your heart to the Lord, then, then this isn't for you. This isn't something you're supposed to, to take. Um, just observe. And, and I, I said, but I first want to give you a chance to accept Christ and, and pray and, and ask questions if you need to. We had three students that night that raised their hands and said, I want to talk more about this. I want to, I, I want to give my heart to the Lord. Uh, two of those three students uh, have since then given their heart to the Lord, uh, Riley being one of them. And uh, so you're going to hear another story here in a couple weeks. But Riley and I got together uh, in my office, and, and yeah, we talked all about uh, how, how much God has pursued you with his love. And, uh, and, and in all of that, it, it, at that point, you looked up at me. It, this is the best part of sharing Christ with people. You looked up at me after I'd been drawing, not... not piece of paper was scribbled all over. I mean, I'd drawn like four different pictures and all this stuff. And your eyes, as you look, you went, I get it. I want, I, that's what I want. That's what I want to do. And you're, you're very kind and you are, um, you're so polite. Uh, it's hard to talk to him on the phone because he just does that. That's what he does. <laughs> and I'm like, you still there? Uh, but, uh, but you, that moment, everything lit up in you and you said, that's, that's what I want. 
And I said, man, I, I, I can help you with that. I can help you talk to God about that. And so in my office, we prayed and you surrendered your heart to the Lord. And that was an amazing thing. That was a dead man in my office. You walked in a dead man. And you walked out alive. Because of what Christ did in your heart that day. That is an amazing story. That's an amazing story. So two more questions and then we're going to go down here and we're going we're gonna to baptize you. First one is this. Who, who then do you understand Jesus to be? I want you to tell everybody here uh, the simplicity of the gospel. Who, who is Jesus to you? He's my Savior. That's it. That's it. And are there, are there people in your life that you would like to thank for, for this journey of faith? Obviously, Jesus is uh, the author and perfecter of our faith. He is the one who gets all the glory. But God puts people in our lives that point us in the right direction from birth on. Is, are there people that you would like to, uh, to thank for being a part of that journey? My mother and my father both really helped me. And Rachel. Rachel did too. That's awesome. All right, man, let's go. Let's do it. Family's right here behind you. They love you there. They're very proud of you. We are all very proud, very excited for you because of all the things that we've been talking about this morning. Riley, because of your profession of faith, because what you've already declared, that Christ is your Lord and that he is your Savior, it is my privilege to baptize you my brother in Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in his death, raised to walk in the newness of life.